Hello, I'm Tim Rogers. You are watching Kotaku.com, and this is not a review of Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Or, as they should call it, Sekiro Players Die a Lot More Than Twice. Full disclosure, I plagiarized that joke from more than 400 YouTube comments. I have read more than 4,000 comments about Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. More than 400 of them made that joke. If we do some simple math, we can conclude that I have read more than 4,000 YouTube comments. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is the new game by From Software, makers of King's Field, Eternal Ring, Metal Wolf Chaos, Otogi, Enchant Arm, Otogi 2, Ninja Blade, and Tenchu. Technically, yes, they also made Dark Souls and Bloodborne, though I was leaving those out of the list in the previous sentence as a sort of a joke, and I'm mentioning them in this sentence because I know someone out there is going to think I literally don't know that From Software made Dark Souls and Bloodborne, so to that guy, thanks for killing my joke. I'm personally more excited about Sekiro than I have been about any game for several years. I'm so excited about Sekiro that I do not want to play it here, in this office, as part of my job, making videos for a video game website. If I do that, I might end up poorly employing a complicated framing device in a way that nobody understands. So I'm going to play the game alone, in the dark, with my front door locked. I assure you, I only watched this week's launch trailer out of scientific interest. I was literally there just to read the comments. The first comment I saw pointed out that the trailer spoiled some of the bosses that will be in the game, so very much against my will I watched the trailer and confirmed that yes, the trailer does show several bosses. Several commenters disagreed with others about whether or not simply showing what a boss looks like is a spoiler for a quote-unquote 30-hour game. I don't know where they're getting the 30-hour figure. Um, if you ask me, though, yes, knowing what a boss looks like in a From Software game is a spoiler. A huge portion of the excitement of fighting a From Software boss is uh, being freaked the heck out by what that boss looks like when it stands up, turns around, looks at you, and starts blaring scary music. I'll be showing a couple of clips from the trailer in this video today, so look away if you're afraid of monsters. Oh. Dozens of commenters pointed out with loud, shocked enthusiasm that the main character's lips move when he talks. I share in this excitement. This is big. Demon Souls came out literally 10 years ago on February 9th, 2009, and I did buy it day one. Since 2009, the From Software development team, which fans lovingly refer to as the Dark Souls A-Team, have developed exclusively games that fans refer to either as Souls-like or Soulsborne games. These games all possess similar game design, thoughtful combat, and over-the-top, borderline, comically brooding atmosphere. Whether it's a budgetary concern or a stylistic choice, one thing all of these recent, as in the last 10 years, from software games have in common is that characters speak to each other telepathically, usually from behind some sort of stone-cold, eyes-wide-shut party masks. Voices boom and echo, Darth Vader-esque, high in the mix, with only a mere insinuation that whatever nearby dead-eyed character is speaking, it's creepy and it rules. Having said that, in the launch trailer for Sekiro, you can clearly see the main character's mouth moving. This moment in the trailer bo broke many commenters' brains. What breaks my brain is that this is the main character. The main character in a From Software game is literally speaking dialogue. He has a face that a professional 3D artist designed, and he's literally speaking dialogue. This alone is almost as big a deal to me as Nintendo announcing a brand new Metroid game. Many commenters sparked lively debates by insinuating that Sekiro was a GOATI candidate. For anybody who doesn't know what GOATI stands for, that stands for Game of the Year. Maybe, maybe you didn't know that. There's got to be somebody who doesn't know that. Most of the heated rebuttals to this claim, which shouted down these insinuations, plainly stated that GOATIs do not come out at the end of March. This is an interesting topic of numerology. So, look, I've already disclosed that I am a From Software maniac. You might be wondering why you've never heard me talk about From Software games. That's because I want to do them justice. 
During my time at Kotaku.com, I have repeatedly pitched a three hour long review of Dark Souls. Myself keeps rejecting the pitch. So I'm not about to indulge in the internet's erstwhile favorite pastime of breathlessly yelling goaty onto a game which I have not yet played. On the other hand, I did do some math. Internet commenters seem to think that the best time to release a goaty candidate is the end of the year. Awards season, as they call it in the film industry. Well, I averaged the release dates of each of the games on Kotaku.com's list of 12 best games of 2017 in search of the best day to release a game of the year. Now, I chose 2017 because that's the year Breath of the Wild came out, and I knew off the top of my head that Breath of the Wild came out on March 2nd. The average of all those dates was May 12th. Now, I know what you're thinking. May 12th is not March 22nd. Well, it ain't Black Friday either. So, is Sekiro Game of the Year 2019? The answer is a definitive maybe. By far the most common comment I saw on trailers for Sekiro was a variation of, I hope Activision don't ruin this. Many commenters vocalized their fears that the Activision logo's presence on the trailer was a guarantee of loot boxes. When Sekiro's PlayStation Network store page went up in August, a badge on the listing indicated that the game would have microtransactions. Activision quickly clarified that this was a mistake. Back during E3 2018, I went with Kotaku's Jason Schreier to a hotel room full of journalists and influencers in which one of From Software's developers played through a slice of Sekiro. One journalist asked why From Software had partnered with Activision of all publishers. The From Software dude's answer was very long and in Japanese. The interpreter translated it all faithfully, except for the word money. I saw probably more than a thousand comments expressing trepidation about Activision's hand in publishing, and I've got to say, I'm disappointed in all of you. I'm not disappointed because you fear loot boxes. No, that's, that's reasonable. I am disappointed in all of you because despite over a thousand comments mentioning Activision and loot boxes, not a one of you used the word microtransactivision. I literally counted 14 of you calling Activision Acticancer. That's not even clever. It doesn't even sound like anything. You, you could have called them Metastavision. Right? Like read some medical literature and get creative for God's sake. Also, here's a fun tidbit. Activision CEO Bobby Kotick made $27.75 million last year. That's enough money to buy 462,500 retail copies of Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. If you thought I was going to calculate something useful or interesting with that number, you're wrong. One of the first threads I saw within minutes of the Sekiro launch trailer going live started with the comment, should I get this or Ghost of Tsushima? I've got to say, buddy, just because two games have a Japanese dude as the main character doesn't mean they're the same game. Samus Aran has a gun arm. Mega Man also has a gun arm. However, nobody accuses Metroid games of being Mega Man-likes. If you include Neo 2, we're looking at three big boy budget, triple A as heck, feudal Japan action adventures releasing in 2019. I mean, that is if Neo 2 is coming out this year, which maybe it is. Though, I'd like to point out that all three of these games have their own distinct flavor of feudal Japan. Neo shows us a dark, mature, adult action manga, dark fantasy version of feudal Japan. Ghost of Tsushima looks to me like a sort of Tom Cruise's The Last Samurai meets Takehiko Inoue's Vagabond Japan, or more of a Toshiro Mifune starring in the Samurai trilogy based on the book Musashi by Eiji Yoshikawa Japan. Sekiro, on the other hand, looks more like a defamiliarized, ninja scrollish, gutsy, blood geysering, heavy metal, berserk like, goopy bloody, filthy hairy, Princess Mononoke, and shock horror Shinto noise beast Japan. Each of these three Japans has its own distinct and valuable flavor. Sekiro, however, is about as Japan as Bloodborne is England. As one commenter said, it's like Dark Souls, the anime. Sekiro's developers have clarified that no actual historical figures or locations appear or are even name-dropped in the game. Furthermore, to the many commenters who said there are too many samurai games coming out this year, this is literally three games, man. 
Also, the main character in Sekiro, for the record, is not a samurai. He's a kind of a ninja who looks sort of like a samurai, and he has a grappling hook. Samurais did not use grappling hooks. Not every unmasked 16th century Japanese dude with a sword is a samurai. Also, shout out to the two commenters who I saw who said the game reminds them of the anime Ninja Scroll. You were both invited to my birthday party. Secret is I'm not actually having a birthday party. A significant percentage of commenters expressed disappointment that From Software is not making Bloodborne 2 or Dark Souls 4. First of all, where are the people asking for Demon's Souls 2? And why hasn't Bloodborne inspired anyone to beg for Cowboy Souls or Pirate Souls, Blade Runner Souls, Armored Core Souls? Assassin's Creed gets a million pitches for Assassin's Creed literally any other historical period every time they announce a game. Also, maybe From Software doesn't want to make Bloodborne 2 because they like the money opportunity of not being PlayStation exclusive. Maybe From Software doesn't want to make Dark Souls 4 because they don't want to make literally a fourth Dark Souls game. What's more, if every Sekiro trailer, preview, and interview released so far is any indication at all, and one would think it should be, Sekiro is actually not a Souls-like game. It doesn't have RPG elements, you don't level up, you can equip different special weapons on your prosthetic arm, though you wield the same sword throughout the game. I saw several commenters disappointed that the hero never changes his sword, by the way. Relax, everybody. It's a samurai sword. Those things are expensive. It's probably a family heirloom. Everything we know right now about Sekiro describes its combat as ultra-fast and liquid smooth. You either use stealth to kill enemies immediately, or you katana duel them until you spot an opening inside of which to strike a killing blow. Shout out to Bushido Blade. The trailer shows one environment consisting of a feudal Japanese House of Cardsy multi-tiered mega castle. You can jump. You have a grappling hook. If anything should immediately prove to anyone that Sekiro is not a Souls game, it's that the trailers on the official PlayStation YouTube channel are 60 frames per second. Now, not one new Souls game has ever launched on PlayStation with a 60 FPS frame rate. Director Hidetaki Miyazaki has literally said he prefers 30 FPS for Souls games. So clearly, if Sekiro is 60 FPS, it's got to be because the game's action is so wickedly different from a Souls game as to require a higher frame rate. The trailer is also 60 FPS on the official Xbox YouTube channel and from Software's own YouTube channel. Though, it's worth pointing out that as of 24 hours after the trailer's debut, the Xbox channel upload of the trailer had 15,000 views, and the PlayStation channel upload had 500,000 views. You know what other game was 60 FPS though? The classic ninja stealth assassin game Tenchu, which also had ninjas, a grappling hook, and thrilling verticality. Now, a common misconception is that From Software is the original developer of Tenchu. That's not true. It's not even technically true. Tenchu games were originally developed by the Japanese developer Acquire and published by a diverse range of publishers, such as Sony Music Entertainment, Microsoft Game Studios, Ubisoft, Sega, and From Software. Even Nintendo published one. A studio named K2 developed some spin-offs, which From Software did publish some of in Japan and one of outside of Japan. Though From Software's creative involvement is about as nebulous as Activision's is with Sekiro. Activision, by the way, published the first three Tenchu games in the United States, and Activision even co-published one Tenchu game in Japan. So Tenchu is such a ninja video game, it is even a master of disguise as regards who the heck its publisher is. Whatever their direct creative relationship with Tenchu may be, it is a fact that From Software does have a history with the franchise. So this From Software developed, Activision published, stealth-killing vertical ninja action game arrives as an interesting coincidence, to say the least. Sekiro's developers do say that they started by looking at Tenchu, though gradually they let the game's design breathe. Similarly, the development staff originally considered Demon's Souls, the first Souls game, a spiritual successor to From Software's King's Field. And I mean spiritual successor literally because both King's Field and Demon's Souls use souls for currency. In other words, we've seen what happens when From Software's Hidetaki Miyazaki's team makes a spiritual successor to a vintage From Software game. Not five seconds into seeing the first Sekiro trailer for the first time, I knew I was on board. I knew that my love for these developers' is coconut-hard brand of video game transcended whatever genres 
with which they wanted to experiment. If you've ever really sat down and loved a Soulsborne game, chances are you love everything about a Soulsborne game. If you have ever finished a Soulsborne game, you know that exploring one is the closest playing a video game comes to an actual romantic relationship. As you walk its labyrinthine streets, you learn everything about the game. You converse with it. You put in emotional labor. It tests your knowledge and trust. If you don't love it, you quit. If you stick with it, your reward is that you are in love forever. And once you love a Souls, you will trust From Software forever. Every game by From Software arrives like a sort of birthday present, just for you, every couple of years. And well, here's Sekiro. From Software made me a new birthday present. It isn't even my birthday. I don't need to have played it to know I already love it. I don't even need to play it to review it. No matter how many times I die against whatever this game's cheapest boss is going to be, I will accept it and I will work through it. And I will come away unable to confess the presence of anything I did not love about the entire experience. In other words, I am extremely biased. If you do not share my bias, maybe read a review written by someone else, someone who's not me. I will see you next time on whatever this is. I was born stupid. However, I will not die hungry even once. Video games forever, Kotaku.com. Congratulations, you watched the whole video or you skipped to the end of the video, which is kind of weird because I did say right at the very beginning, this is not a review. So if you were skipping to the end to see like a score, that's really weird um, because that means that you basically started watching the video and presumed I was I was telling you a lie within like the first five seconds. And uh, that's not me, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to just tell you like it is here. Um, we have more videos and we have a channel you can subscribe to and you can like this video and if you liked it, you can leave a comment and if you didn't like it, call somebody close to you and, and tell them about the video you didn't like because then maybe they'll watch it and they'll like it and they'll leave a nice comment because maybe not everybody you know has the exact same taste as you. Thanks.